Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us today for Kids Corner. Our topic today is sea turtles. So as you can see, I've got some cool stuff on the table in front of me. Some of the sea turtles on this table are real sea turtles. They are dried specimens. And then other ones are fake. So see if you guys can figure out which ones you think are which. Now some people don't know a lot about sea turtles and I'm gonna be sure to tell you as much as I can in the time I have for you today. Now there are seven species of sea turtles. So you can see over here in this awesome image that there are seven and then this one is extinct. This is an extinct species right here. It's the shadow of it. This was Archelon. This was a sea turtle species that lived millions of years ago. Because guys, sea turtles have been around for a hundred million years. They've been here for a really long time. But a lot of them are extinct now. There used to be hundreds of species. Now there are seven. So we have the smallest species in the world, which is also the most endangered species in the world. And that is the Kemp's Ridley. They only have one nesting beach in the world, and it's in Mexico. The second, big, uh, second smallest is the Olive Ridley. They get to be about two and a half feet long. Following that, we have the Hawksbill sea turtle. A fun fact about the Hawksbill is they're one of the only sea turtles and one of the only animals that eat sea sponges. The special shape of their mouth allows them to bite through those hard sea sponges. The next biggest is the flatback sea turtle. An interesting fact about the flatback sea turtle is you're only gonna find them around the northern coast of Australia and Papua New Guinea. So you're not gonna find them in many places around the world. Next up, we have the loggerhead sea turtle. This is the sea turtle that you're gonna see most in the United States, so that's pretty cool. Um, they are not the biggest though. After the loggerhead, we've got the green sea turtle, one of the most well-known sea turtles in the world. And these guys, a lot of people think are called green sea turtles because of their shell. That's not why they're called green sea turtle. They eat a lot of seagrass and algae, and this actually makes their insides green, their meat and their muscle and tissue. So that is actually where they get that name, the green sea turtle. The largest of all the sea turtles alive today, though, is the leatherback sea turtle. These guys can get to be six feet long, and they look very different from a northern normal sea turtle. These guys over here have a bony shell covering their body. It has scoots on it. You can't see a leatherback's bony shell. It's actually covered in this leathery skin with these ridges going down it. So they are in their own family of sea turtles. And then the rest of them are in a family together. So these are the seven species of sea turtles left today. And all of them except one are endangered. So the only one listed as threatened instead of endangered is the loggerhead sea turtle. The rest of them are endangered and three of them are critically endangered, the most endangered being that Kemp's Ridley. Um, so some of the problems that are gonna face these guys are going to be things like pollution. So in our world's oceans, we have lots of different types of pollution, whether it's fishing materials like nets or fishing line, plastic bags or plastic bottles. Um, this plastic bottle actually kind of has two purposes. Inside it, there is water and a plastic baggie. And some people might not even notice the baggie, but to a sea turtle, this plastic baggie is gonna look like a sea jelly. And that's why the turtle's gonna eat it. It's gonna look like a moon jelly or another type of clear sea jelly. And then sometimes it might choke the animal or it might just get stuck. Now here at Mystic Aquarium, we can actually help sea turtles. We have a rescue clinic that helps seals and sea turtles. And a lot of sea turtles come in this time of year due to natural causes. Um, so it's called cold stunning. So a, a sea turtle is a reptile and a reptile is cold blooded. So a reptile, if they're in 65 degree water, their temperature is going to match their environment. It's going to be 65 degrees unlike a mammal, like a seal, who can control their body temperature. If they're in uh, 65 or 55 degree water, they can keep themselves warm 
at 99 degrees. Sea turtles can't do this. So this time of year, especially on the Connecticut coast and the Rhode Island and Massachusetts coasts, we get a lot of sea turtles that are cold stunned, meaning the temperature is just too cold for their body to work properly and they kind of freeze up and they need assistance from humans. So thankfully places like Mystic Aquarium is able to help animals like this. Another problem for sea turtles are natural predators, like on the beach when they're hatching out of their eggs because a reptile does hatch from an egg. Things like raccoons, feral cats and dogs, seagulls and other birds are definitely gonna try to get to those eggs. Uh, and then once they hatch, they've got more predators even out in the water that are gonna, that are gonna try to eat them as well. So lots of natural predators. Um, another problem is going to be climate change. A fun fact about sea turtles is since they're born out of an egg and the eggs are in the sand, the temperature of the sand actually tells you what gender the baby turtle is going to be born as. So if the sand is in the sun and it's really warm, the eggs in that nest are going to come out as female, as girl eggs, as girl hatchlings. If the nest in the sand is in the shade and they're cooler temperatures, those eggs are gonna hatch as male hatchlings. Now with climate change, our planet is getting warmer and studies have shown that a lot more sea turtles are being born as females because of this uh, fun fact about sea turtles. So they've got a lot of problems facing them today, guys. Some other fun facts I can tell you is that they travel the world a lot. So if you're somebody who likes to travel, then this might be your spirit animal because some sea turtles travel up to 10,000 miles from their nesting grounds to their feeding or breeding grounds. Um, a good example of that is the leatherback sea turtle. They travel the farthest, they get the biggest, and they dive the deepest. So they, they are gonna go very far. Um, the flatback turtle though, the one I mentioned only lives around the shores of Australia, they're only gonna travel hundreds of miles a year, maybe up to 800 miles a year. So they still like to travel, but not as much as the leatherback. All right guys, so the only last thing I wanna mention is how you can tell the difference between the different species. And you can find this sort of information online if you're curious. Uh, but these guys, this uh, chart here, is gonna show you some of the different species and how you can tell them apart. Um, so one of the main things to look at is the shape of their head, the shape of their carapace, which is their top shell, and then the shape of their plastron, which is their bottom shell. Um, so the beak, their mouth, is going to be shaped slightly different on their head. The number of scoots or scales on the top of their head is going to be different. The number of scoots or scales on the shell is going to be different. So there's subtle differences but this is definitely gonna help you tell them apart. They also make different tracks on the beach when they go up to lay their eggs. Their uh, flipper tracks look different from one species to another, kind of like a footprint or a fingerprint. All right, and then I think I'll just show you guys this. This was the real one. So earlier, if you had made a guess which of the three was the real sea turtle, this was the one. That one's a stuffed animal, that one's made of plastic. But this one is real, it is a dried specimen, so it died of natural causes and then was donated to the aquarium. You can see it's doing the turtle tuck, where it tucks its flippers up on its back to protect itself and not seem as, uh, it doesn't wanna stick out. And then underneath, you can actually see inside that his uh, spine, his backbone, is fused to his shell. So inside that backbone is fused to the shell. And that is why sea turtles cannot come out of their shells. They are attached to them. They are connected. They also cannot pull their flippers or head into the shell like other turtles can. And that's because of their large swimming muscles and their large lungs to be able to hold their breath. All right, guys, so I hope you've learned a lot about sea turtles today. They are one of my favorite animals because of how old they are, how long they've been around, and how majestic they swim through our oceans. 
please help keep our oceans clean so that we can protect them. And remember, if you see an animal that needs help, you can always call the Mystic Aquarium's Rescue Clinic line. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you soon here at Mystic Aquarium.